The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis. we got Shane Smolian coming up in a few minutes, folks, with some good stuff. He's always had uh, some really good timing things, uh, and we're going to be watching what he has to say. But today was very interesting. You know, one of the key things that I've done over the last five or six years working closely with Tom Hugard is to watch that 382 retracement level. And I posted the one for the bonds uh, today at uh, 102. 120 and change. It went to 120.05. It's now trading $500 lower. The NASDAQ is now 100 points lower than the high that it was made there at the, at the 382 retracement. The S&P is trading at about oh, 12 handles lower. That came in at 49, uh, excuse me, 444, 44.78. And the high was 447 and a half so it missed it by a little bit but that doesn't mean a whole lot what it means is that you got to pay attention to those numbers because these uh, algorithmic traders that are out there if you don't think that they use these numbers you are being very very naive i watch these every day as do some of my students and we see that the highs and lows can come in very closely to those times that we're looking at now, I did post the chart of the NASDAQ, and I'll post the chart of the Treasury bonds. What I'd like for you to do, just to prove to yourself that this works, I want you to do the one on the E-mini S&P, and I want you to do the one on the Russell and see what you come up with. Now, the fact that these numbers hit, I mean, almost to the exact number is really quite amazing. So please, please do that if you have an interest. If you don't have an interest, not necessary, you don't even have to do it. I don't want to push anybody into something that uh, they don't want to do. Now, they say that the chart is not showing, and yet I've, <clears throat> I've posted it three times, and it looked like it was going to be there. So just give me one second, and I'll see if we can get it up one more time here. With the technical trading gods in our favor, and there it is. There's the Treasury bond, folks, the largest of all the markets. The notes and bonds are by far the, the biggest of any of the commodities that we trade. We had an order today to sell gold at 1950. It got to 19, excuse me, 1955. It got to 1954 and change, and I missed the order, and it broke so fast I didn't even get a chance to get into it again. So it was one of those that you, uh, you know, look behind you and say, uh-oh, what did I do wrong? What I didn't do wrong is I didn't lose any money on the trade, and that's the main thing. I might have lost some profit, but I didn't lose anything. I just didn't get filled on this one. The bonds worked perfectly. NASDAQ worked perfectly. The others were looking really good, but that one just missed by a little bit. That's all part of trading, folks. And one of the biggest things that the big traders, and I'm not a big trader. I'm a, I'm a little country boy just trying to make uh, ends meet, a little bacon here, a little cheese there, to make a couple bucks. But the big guys, their biggest problem is fear of missing out on something. They hate to miss big moves. And when they miss something like that, it really, really upsets me. Me, it does not. The reason why is I have other things that I'm looking at. You know, I was looking to, I was long soybeans. They made a nice profit on the day. I reversed and went short. So far, that's looking okay. But it doesn't make any difference. It's just a pattern. And that's, that's really all it's about. It's just a pattern. And all I look for are patterns. I know one thing very, very clearly, and that is I know what these patterns can do. One of the reasons that I don't do as much astrology as I do is twofold. The guests that I have on the show here are 10 times or more proficient in astrology than I am. I know one thing, A, B, C, D. That's what I know. Okay? But they're very good at that. And I know someday down the road when I'm up in that uh, big castle in the sky with the Lord, I hope that's where I'm going to go, <clears throat> that there'll be a segment on CNBC or uh, TFNN, or not TFNN, CNBC or uh, Bloomberg or Financial Times News, something like that, talking about the cycles of astrology. And that's all they are, folks. They're cycles. They're nothing more than days, nothing more or less. Sometimes they're spot on. 
Other times, they're not. But you know what? That's the same thing. It's true of ABCD, folks. And it, this morning when I woke up, I've, I've had a wonderful time here at TFNN over the last 17 years. Last night, I was up almost all night trading, doing a, selling highs and trying to buy the lows and stuff like that. Had a pretty good day. But the, the fact is that here I am at uh, the age of uh, we're heading towards that uh, ninth, or the ninth for a long pull, and I passed the mile pole at eight. And so I've got about another another seven furlongs or another two and a half furlongs to go to reach the ninth furlong. And uh, I can't believe that I, I can still do what I like to do at this age and be in relatively good health. And when I say that, we live every day in an attitude of gratitude. Let me tell you, folks, I really mean it. One of our friends here has a problem with uh, some uh, uh, neighbors that uh, had some problems with some things. And they asked for some help from Sarah and I. And and uh, we we were happy to help out if we could, but uh, this is what this is what we what we really try to do. And I, I I the other thing I wanted to mention is that I really enjoy all the people here at TFNN. The feedback that I get is really important to me because I uh, I value it and I try to do the best job I can. But basically, folks, when it comes down to push shove, this is it, baby. I know one thing, and that's A B equals C D. You can stick with that. And you're going to be okay. The problem is people get involved in the fundamentals. They get involved in listening to rumors, uh, all what everybody else is saying or, you know, uh, prospects of, uh, you know, major crash. <laughs> None of that means anything, folks. What means anything is what that ABCD is doing because that's what is the one that tells you whether you're going to be making it to the promised land. And that's the truth. There's nothing else more I can say about that. And I know some people are going to say, well, why are we paying all this money? Hey, look, I posted charts last night to sell bonds at 120. I told, I said to sell gold at one, uh, 1955. It got to 1954 and a half. Uh, what was the other one? We had the, uh, the NASDAQ was right at the, the 382 retracement and uh, soybeans. I don't, we sold soy, the March soybeans at, uh, we were long the soybeans and reversed and went short, so we made five cents on six cents on the upside, and then we went long, went short at uh, thirteen sixty two, and, and risking only four cents. So that's what we were trying to do today, and we were long the euro and got out right near the high, because that was what? Yes, Johnny, I know it was a three a two. If you don't believe me, folks, pull up an hourly chart on the S and P and look at the high today, and you go back and look at the previous high that you can see on that chart. And what's it going to be looking at? 0 0.382. And that's what we do. I hope you help helps you with this because that's what I try to do is to get us to the point where we don't have to risk very much. And that's the real reason of what we're looking at. All I do, and one of my very dear friends over in the UK says, if you see a print of 44.55 today in the no, uh, S&P, which is still the September, I'm going to go into that. Well, I'm not going to have time to go into that, but... If you're trading the September and we're rolling over to the December, which they did it a week early, which is why I don't know. But that's one of the things that happens when you're trading these darn things. So pay close attention to that, okay? We'll be right back. Shane Small, you next, folks. 877-927-6648. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN. Educating Investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. NN.com. Call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Hey, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Shane Smolian, the WolfTrader.com, on the line. Shane, are you there? Is this Duke and Duke? 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. Happy well, Friday. We've had some, happy Friday. We've had some volatility today. So what are you seeing here in the market? Hey, listen, why don't you show us what you're doing, and then we'll ask questions later. So fire away. Sure. Okay, so – on the last segment we did earlier this week, I talked about the geomagnetic storm. So for those those people who, did, who didn't get a chance to tune in, I'm going to go through this again just to kind of give everybody a background in terms of, of, of how this works uh, because it is so important uh, with the S&P. And these are things that they have a seasonality and they also have an unpredictabil unpredictability to them. These storms can come off of the sun. Uh, this is a map of the, the solar storm activity now. Uh, this is an annual cycle, so there is an annual cycle, uh, so this follows an annual pattern, believe it or not. So this is this is the number of storms here on the left that happen per year, and these are the months at the bottom. So you might be wondering, what, what does solar storms have to do with the market? I, I don't care about solar storms. I care about the market. Well, the reason is that these storms do affect the markets. They affect humans and their emotions, and this is well documented. And as this storm activity increases, it has an inverse or a negative effect on the market so right now we're in september so we are approaching peak months uh between now and october and we have seen quite a few months so i spoke last time that this is the seasonal pattern of, of the dow jones uh dow jones typically does tend to fall into decrease from the september period into october november and one of the things that i noticed here was that this this looks familiar to me when i saw both of these so i put them on top of each other and you can see that there is a direct inverse relationship to the solar storm activity, which increases on the letter A here, and the Dow Jones falls on the letter A. So, uh, solar storm activity decreases on B. The Dow Jones rallies up on B. The solar storm activity increases from this July to October period. Dow Jones falls, this letter C. And then, of course, we bottom right around the end of October, and then we get this positive hol holiday seasonal uh, through Thanksgiving and whatnot. Now, people attribute these seasonals to different things. I mean, we have different commodities, and then there's, there's planting seasons and harvest seasons, and every commodity is different with their seasonals. But the, the question that I really 
would like to ask here is, is this solar storm activity responsible for the, 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 the solar cycle? I mean, for the equities? I mean, it's a, it's a valid question because we know that these storms do affect the psyche of people. Uh, it's well documented, and I'll get into that a little bit here. But I, I really pose this question, is this what's causing the solar cycle uh, for equities. We really have to ask that question because the relationship is, is clear here in terms of the inverse relationship. Now, these geomagnetic storms, this information is from a paper uh, from the Federal Reserve on geomagnetic storms. And essentially what they what they found was that when these storms come off of the sun, uh, the following week, the markets are depressed. And it's 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 you know, there's a couple of outlier countries here. Uh, but for the most part, uh, when we look at the world, there is a global depression, and there there's all of these theories w as to why this occurs. But in in literature, in in psychology, in medical liter literature, there is documented information about people experiencing emotional distress and depression after these storms come across the earth. And then, of course, humans make decisions about the markets, and so the markets tend to rally when people are excited and optimistic, and they tend to fall when they're fearful and pessimistic. So this this tends to have a, a very small a, like a small small term effect on the markets and and this is a look at the nasdaq the s p the amex and the new york stock exchange they're all down for about a period of one week now this is after a big storm i mean that we have different rank just like hurricanes you know you have a category one category two this is after the big storms but the markets do have a depressed level after this and the other thing that they looked at here they looked at the size of the stocks and the smaller the stock the more the impact on the price of the stock. And so you might say, well, what is that? What, how does a, the size of a stock affect if it's gonna go down or not? I mean, it's just a stock, right? I mean, how can, how can, how can the stock feel what's going on with the solar storm? And their, their reasoning was in the paper was that the smaller micro caps and small caps, this is usually smaller investors. This is not institutional investors. Mm -hmm. And the larger caps, are pretty much they're buy and hold. I mean, a lot of these invest they're not going to sell off Apple because a storm comes or something, right? They're just going to hold it. <laughs> but a lot of these smaller terms, you know, people make emotional decisions, and so it's very, very interesting that the smaller the the, the cap, the more that the the stock gets depressed. And so we would expect the Russell to get to get uh, hit the hardest. And so this is one of the reasons why I focus on the Russell when we have these solar storm seasons and we're looking for shorting opportunities. I like the Russell because it's more sensitive to these. So real quick, I am just going to talk about some paper, some conclusions in the paper here. Um, but they, they showed that this was a statistically significant in terms of the, the decreases in the markets after these storms come across. And then they said that they document that uh, these storms affect smaller capitalization stocks. And they say they re-rationalize this finding by noticing institutional ownership is for higher cap stocks, like I just said, and smaller caps are being held by individuals. And so this is what they think. And then this this blue part down here says overall results are consistent with some of the recent findings in the psychology literature are robust to different measures to capture the geomagnetic storm effect. And um, it says, as a supported argument, we use clinical studies showing that geomagnetic storms have a profound effect on people's moods. And in turn, people's moods have been found to relate to human behavior, judgments, and decisions about risk. Now, the reason I bring this up is because the, the, the theory of astrology is the same thing. When these transits are happening in the sky, it affects the emotions of people, and the markets can tend to follow this. So it's, it's a, it, this is not astrology per se, but it's a similar concept in terms of affecting the psyche of people and that we are very sensitive uh, to these storms as they come across. So I'm going to show you a couple of pictures here. Uh, and again, I'm just giving some background, but this was March 31st of 2022. Now, this was after that big decline here uh, that we had when the Fed started the tightening. And we had this rally up here, and you can see that this is when the geomagnetic storm comes right here, and it's, it ends the rally right there. So this was the first time I was really looking at this as a, some type of a predictor. Uh, and so I really started to track this stuff. So that was in March. I said, well, that's interesting. I mean, um, you know, maybe that was just a lucky mm -hmm. call. Uh, but we looked at it again in August. In August of 22, we had another rally here, a big one in the summer, and then the G3 geomagnetic storm came and and whacked the market down. Uh, and the G, there was another G2 storm down here. Now it does help if you're in a bear market uh, because it's, you know you already have this negative sentiment going on. But it's really amazing how these storms show up right at these market peaks, and these are things that you cannot time. At the beginning, like I can't put this in a newsletter and say the geomagnetic storm is coming on, you know, September 17th or whatever. They, they give you some warning 
and even when you track this, it's it's sometimes the warning is off. It's not it's not so clear like a hurricane is. So I do my best to give these forecasts to people, but it's really amazing that this is a new tool that we have in our arsenal. What we do know about this month for sure is that statistically this is a month where we have more of these storms and then it happens again in October and we all know that Black Monday in 1987 and all these horrible stock market crashes have happened in this October period when the solar storm activity is the highest. So um, just, 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 just a little bit of background to give people in terms of what's going on. So again, this was last summer. This was August of 2022. But let's pay we'll a few bills. You bet. This is really great stuff, folks. I'll tell you a story about this later when Shane's on 877-927-6648. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're speaking with Shane Smoley, WolfTrader.com. Please continue, my friend. Okay, so this is a graph of a recent graph of this year, looking at the different solar storms uh, in terms of what's going on. Now, we had this phase here early where we had this bullish momentum building here. So when the G when the storms came across earlier this year, it it had a corralling effect on the market. In other words, it, it impeded it from rallying. But the minute the storms disappeared, you got this breakout rally here, and the market had a nice run here actually. And then we started to get a series of very small storms near the top. And the Fed internals finally shifted into a cell. 
And so now we are on the backside of this. And we just had another G2 storm here this week. We had a G2 mm -hmm. storm, and then we had another G1, a little one that came right after it. And that was right on this decline here. So once again, Shane. this – yes. Okay, we've got a caller coming in. Could you uh, take the call? Uh, sure. You, uh, uh, who's on the line, please? Uh, uh, this is call. Chris White from San Leandro, California. Aha. Uh -huh. When did they let you out of prison, sir? How long has it been? <clears throat> <laughs> well, it's been almost a week, but I'm trading already. God bless you, my friend. Uh, Shane, you got you got somebody that's in the family here, so take good care of him. Chris, go ahead and answer your question. Uh, here's my question. Um, which economic report, other than the Fed, of course, most affects the S&P 500, you know, like consumer data? Which Which economic report that comes out? affects the S&P the most? Well, okay. <laughs> There's three big ones that I would look at. Now, in terms of affecting, I, I'm, talk, I'm going to talk about volatility here, but of course you have the non-farm non payrolls, which occurs on the first Friday of the month. You have the CPI report, which is the inflation, and then you have the GDP. And those are the three big ones that move the markets. Now, there are other markets that you could look at, like Michigan sentiment. Um, anytime, anytime you have a Fed meeting, you're going to have big movements, and the market also tends to rally or get very volatile while the Fed is giving his speech. So you're talking about 2 o'clock to roughly 3.15 on those Fed meeting days. And then you also have days where you have the Fed minutes where they release what the Fed said, and usually that's at like a, that's like at a 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So those are, those are the – I would say if I had to pick five, I would say non-farm payrolls, CPI, GDP – the Fed FOMC meeting, and then also the press conference, and then the the Fed minutes, and then if you're into agriculture, there is there's the crop report, which is which is equivalent to a Fed in terms of explosive moves. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's pretty much it. I have to agree Great. with that. All right. Well, Any other questions? Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Chris. Larry. Please continue. Please continue, uh, Shane. I just had to tell you in Go person ahead. on this on this show <laughs> it's Thank great you. You those, will be big, those will be shane those would be big shoes to fill right <laughs> well i don't know about that <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting to see to see who gets the show all right you guys thanks thank, thank you. you for thank all you, so you much. do you bet thank you fire away larry that's the last thing in my mind let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> in my mind you're going to be around forever so We'll, we'll, we'll just uh, forever, we'll stick with that. Forever thought. could be tomorrow. You never know, Bubba. Well, let's hope not. Okay, so uh, when we look at the S and P here, um, you know, still still holding right at that fifty day moving average. Nasdaq, same thing with the S and P. Um, there there are some divergences that I've been looking at here on this market. Uh, one of them is money flow. I mean, there's a there's a money flow divergence down into this under this forty three hundred. I think that's going to go down and fill. Um, I mean, it's been meandering around here. Uh, and so that that's been one. There's a, there's quite a few gaps down here still. Uh, we have on the S and P cash we have uh, 4232 and then 3979, and these are all gaps that are like likely to fill if we we do start to get a sell off. They, these tend to be magnetic points, uh, very, very similar to Fibonacci points, and these are all sitting at some heavy uh, support and resistance points. So we'll we'll see what happens there. Um, now we're talking about daily daily Fed info. What I do want to uh, touch on here is the Fed juice. Now, the the gentleman just called in and asked me about the top, you know, the top days where it moves the markets, and and those days are, are somewhat unpredictable. I mean, it's just you know you get a big volatile move, especially in the bond markets on those job reports and CPI and CPI numbers. But this one is data that I collect daily, and I have an indicator on the Fed juice. And to me, this is this is the bread and the butter. Now, Larry, I listen to your shows all the time. I was listening to Joe DiNapoli yesterday talk about how he had such a good 2007 and 2008, and then 2009, everything went crazy. Now, Larry, I cannot tell you how many people have said that to me. I'm, I myself was included in that group. When 2009 hit, all of a sudden, everything went crazy. This is when they started the Fed juice. This is when all this stuff started, guys. This stuff didn't exist before 2009, and that's why the markets were very, very – friendly uh, to a lot of traders. Now, there there are algos out there. He's absolutely right about that. He is spot on about that. But the Fed affected this. And so right now, the Fed internals are falling right now. 
And so as long as this this is falling, there's no fuel for a rally. It just cannot go without the Fed. We see these we see these rallies pop up here and then it fails back down. So as long as this is still in a declining pattern, uh, I'm definitely okay with being short on this market. And so particularly on the Russell, that's a, that's a preferential market right now, simply because that those geomagnetic storms are going to be picking up this month. And we want to be into the small caps on the short side. Now, I, I do have short positions on all three of these markets right now, S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell. But the Russell is the one that really gets slammed. And you saw this week, the Russell really got hit hard. I mean, this when that storm came across, the Russell dropped 30 points in, in a day. I mean, it was just instantaneous. Uh, it's really amazing how how quickly that affects uh, th that, that affects the Russell. So we still have a really strong uh, just downward pattern to this market. And so I'm, I'm not comfortable being short on the S&P very much, but right now I, I feel like it's the play to do. Uh, now, you know, in terms of picking projection points and, I, you know, I do break with other technicians. Other technicians will tell you, you know, if the market breaks this level, watch out, it's going to keep going. I don't, I don't believe that because I've seen the Fed erase incredible horrific technical damage you know like the kind that you need plastic <laughs> surgery to fix a face in an accident you know like those types of mangled charts and then all yeah. of a sudden they just pop back to life like in the 1980 you know like in like those horror movies like halloween or freddy krueger like you think he's dead and then all of a sudden he pops back to life that that's what happens when when the fed starts to search this this market and search the juice these markets can recover very quickly so i i'm very careful about saying hey you know once it breaks this level it's, it's all over because we know that there's just a there's a dynamic interplay now between the Fed and the markets, and it's a permanent thing. It's just something that it's a new way of life that 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 is a matter of fact in these markets. So, you know, right now I still I still think the S and P is weak, and I still think we have some downside. But I I just don't I just know that when they want to change this, they can, uh, and I think they probably you know probably prices are too high. I mean, we still have CPI is still a little bit high. They they want it to come down another point. And we know that that's tough to get that last point down. So, you know, I, you know, this, this, if this thing starts running away, that's also an inflationary type of an indication. So they probably want this, you know, down into a level that's that's somewhat tame. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I do have. I, go ahead. No, uh, we we're fine here, but we've got to take okay. a break here in thirty seconds. Sure. So, uh, we'll get ready for that second break. But uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, we've got starting right now, but we'll be back in about sure. three minutes. Okay. With Shane Smolian, folks, WolfTrader.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, with Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. But before we get to that, I want to give a gift to anybody, any males out there. I know this is a sexist thing, but I can't help it. And that dude does not like shaving. Folks, if you go to CVS and buy uh, some shaving cream called Cremo, C-R-E-M-O, folks, every Friday I usually go to the barber here in town to have a barber shop shave, you know, with a straight razor and everything like that. But with this uh, shaving cream, which is $10, you will not believe the shave that you get. And now we're going to turn it over to our main man, the wolf trader himself, Shane Smolian. Go ahead, my friend. Larry, you're, you're Italian, right? Enough. You're I Italian, you're right? Not, I'm Italian, but you're not old enough to shave. Later uh, on, aren't you, aren't you afraid you're going to get whacked at one of those barber shops? <laughs> no, 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 no. You always go, always have your face to the door. Don't have the back to the door. That's the key. <laughs> all right. Go ahead. All right. A cremo. All right. All right. Yeah, it's good stuff. Well, check it out. Um, S&P, uh, just statistically, if we look at some of these statistics, uh, Thursday is the weakest day statistically, and Wednesday and Thursday are the two weakest days. This is most recent here. Uh, this will be interesting because the Fed meeting's coming up soon. So Wednesday, Thursday, week. So keep an eye on that market next week after the Fed meeting. Those tend to be the, the weakest days. Monday, Tuesday are the two strongest days. At least statistically, that's how it's been going. Uh, we did talk about the planetary speed index before. This is the 1987 market crash, and the red line here is the planetary speed index. And uh, there are some signatures that do show up when the planetary speed index is falling. Mercury station, Venus, Uranus, and then Mercury station again. Uh, we are coming into a period here. Uh, we just hit the midpoint of the Mercury retrograde, and that, that can tend to be a reversal of the cycles. And we just saw the S&P top in this little uh, rally. So it's coming into another low into here in the next day or so. So we're definitely not out of the woods here on this. This is still a, a, a dangerous time for this S&P. And so I, I just remind everybody to be cautious with this. Now, uh, Larry, this is one of your favorites, the Bradley, right? The traditional Bradley. This is the one yep. that uh, Arch Crawford also used to talk about all the time. And uh, this, this, this is declining all the way through the rest of the year. We just came up into this little uh, shoot up here, and it's going to be falling uh, all the way through January – so, you know, what I tell people about this, Bradley, is, you know, when the Fed is weak, which the Fed is weak now, uh, th this tends to become very accurate. I mean, it picked up the little rally that we had. And so this tracks the rhythm of the planets and the cycles, or, or the, the transits, which probably has a similar effect as the solar storms on, on, on people. Uh, but when the Fed is strong, stuff doesn't work as much. You want to talk about the U.S. dollar? I certainly do. I would like to mention, folks, that when he's talking about these cycles, they're nothing more than days. As we talk about the Mercury cycle, it's usually 88 days, Venus cycle, 255 days. That's really what you're dealing with. But when you bring in the A word, some people get you know absolutely petrified. Raise your hand, well, Larry. But anyway. That, that, yeah, well, that <laughs> – that, Look, that oscillation across of, of Mercury across the sun, that's a that mimics simple harmonic motion in physics. It's the same exact concept hey, of restoring forces. That, 
directly that's what, inversely that's, proportional to the displacement. And that's that's, that's how they, right. they model that simple harmonic motion. And so when that mi Mercury hits the midpoint, the acceleration vector shifts. And that's probably why yep. it's changing the markets. Anyway, um, U.S. dollar, uh, Fed juice, we've been tracking this on the Fed juice. It's just continuing to go higher here. Uh, this Fed juice is these are the red arrows. So the Fed juice, you may you may ask, well, what does this have to do with the dollar? I thought the Fed affected the S&P. Well, I I I have a trading neural network that I can track what the Fed is doing for any market, and that's what this is. And so the dollar has been just steadily climbing, and so the Fed juice picks this up. It stays long, and then this blue one here is a lunar cycle. For those of you who aren't afraid of the moon, it's a cycle based upon the moon. <laughs> it's called the quad lunar cycle, and uh, the moon affects the tides. Uh, and it's it's going up to till 9/11. So you know that gives headwinds, that gives issues for things like gold too. Uh, now the 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 solar cycle or the annual. So don't get scared of the word solar, guys. It's just an annual cycle. This is an annual pattern. If you say the word seasonal to people, they become more comfortable with this. But it's really just tracking the position of the sun, and then it just like a clock. It's just a clock, Larry. It's like you say, it's like a cycle. Uh, but the dollar gets stronger now, going all the way into November. Uh, so this is a positive seasonal time for the dollar. So probably gold's gonna gonna struggle a little bit here. I mean, gold was supposed to have a positive period uh, where it was supposed to rally according to the seasonal pattern, but it didn't. Uh, and so now it's coming into a negative, and it usually runs inverse of of this. Any questions on the dollar? No, that's pretty much okay. spot on. That's what I like to hear. It's a uh... Exactly. But, you know, when I did the books on astrology, you know, people would always be petrified of the word astrology. But in fact, it's you know, nothing more than cycles. So the problem that I had with it, uh, Shane, was, you know, I was I was a really uh, practicing Catholic, which I still am, but not to the extent that I was in 1988. And, uh, you know, you basically the Catholic Church said if you uh, do anything with astrology, you're dealing with the devil. And I says, well, I have a lot of experience because I've been married to this one for 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, once I got rid of her, it, it, it sort of fit together. But, uh, you know, it, it's just numbers. That's all it really is. So I, I hope that makes sense to the folks that are out there listening to this. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's like looking at the clock on the wall. It's the same concept. Uh, yes, it's just, it is. It's just, it's it's it just is, a yes. clock. It's just a clock. Uh, oil. Oil is still positive, guys. It's still positive. The seasonal is positive all the way through October. Uh, so, you know, I still have oil positive on the Fed juice and the quad lunar. You can see here on this chart, these two arrows, the Fed juice goes into a bond A25 and then the quad lunar on uh, A25. And that's always nice when the seasonal pattern lines up with these signals. They usually you get a nice move. And then we did get a, a nice little lift here. Uh, and that tops on 911 is when the oil tops. And then if we're looking at a pairs trade, I do a pairs trade uh, uh, between – I have like four of them we look at. But uh, this is oil and gold, and this has been pretty good. I mean this picks this up on July 31st. This gets long on oil, uh, short on gold. So so oil is weak relative – sorry, gold is weak relative to oil. But if you looked at Bitcoin, gold is actually strong relative to Bitcoin. So it just depends on what you're looking at. Uh, but this is still showing that we have strength in that oil market. and. You know, I mean, there's all kind. I know Joe was talking yesterday about these crazy numbers on oil, and I, I don't, I don't really get into projections like that. I just kind of follow the cycles and I follow the signals. I just follow the trading signals. You know, if they say buy, I buy. I don't, you know, I, I don't see, overthink this stuff because this has already been optimized. So I, when the, when the buy signal comes, I just buy. I don't, I don't overthink it. Uh, and and if it's a sell, I sell regardless of where where those yep. those patterns are. So, um, do we have time for gold? Yes, sir, we do. We have this, and then we have another two minutes coming after the break, so let's do gold. Okay, so traditionally, this was supposed to be a strong period for gold. Uh, there's a couple of runs that it makes in the year, and, and uh, July, August is typically supposed to be good, and it wasn't. Uh, and now we're coming into this period where it, it kind of falls off into early October, and usually when that occurs um, – you get some selling because it wasn't able to to rally during the period where it was supposed to rally, if that makes sense. So on a relative basis, it was weak. So uh, you know, gold's probably going to struggle here. Uh, the only the I do want to show you one chart here, actually, Larry. I don't know if I've ever showed you this, but we track the Japanese yen versus gold, and can you see this the correlations on these charts between these two? Wow. Take a look at these two. They're almost wow. exactly 
they yes, almost, it I'll is. talk about this when we get but, back. But. Yeah, we will. We'll be back, folks. 877-927-6648. Shane Smolian, folks. WolfTrader.com. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Back, folks, talking with one of the smartest dudes I know, Shane Smullion, the WolfTrader.com, and I mean that sincerely, and you know that. Thank you very so much. Please continue on the goal. We want to know highs oh. and lows. Other than that, what? we're not interested. So go ahead. I'm a, I'm a, I get the hook, right, if I don't get it. Um, you got it. Just, just wanted to show you guys something. <laughs> this is the tip of the day for, for everybody. The Japanese yen leads the gold. gold okay, uh, Take a look at these charts. I always show these on my daily updates on the metals section. But you can see here the yen, when the yen turns, it turns about a week before gold does every time. If you look at this chart, you look at it at 525, you look at August the 2nd. You can see the yen turns first and then gold turns 1021. The yen turns first, gold makes the double bottom, then the gold does. Same concept here on July 7th, or sorry, January 17th. Yen turns first, then gold turns. And so I always look, Larry, I always look at the Japanese yen that's to a, confirm a gold a good, move here. And, that's good to know. And, I'll be watching that closely yeah. from now on. Yeah, and the yen is very weak right now, and so I, I again, this this does not look good for gold, at least on the short term. I mean, gold's resilient, of course, but um, on the short term here, I just think as long as that yen is down, 
uh, and mm -hmm. struggling like that, I think it's going to be an issue. And again, I talked about that seasonal pattern getting weak here for, for gold. So uh, anyway, so I think we're running out of time. Do we have time for Apple or? We have one more. We have one more minute and two, three seconds. So please continue okay. with Mr. Appel. Okay. Real, real quick, Apple. So I have this Wolf Trader wave that I've developed, which is it's it's a it's kind of like an Elliott wave concept that counts, but it's it's machine learning. Uh, so I built it to my likings, and this is down till December, and so that kind of confirms what I'm looking at in the S and P. I think we're going to be down for a while, for a few months here, uh, and until the Fed turns turn this around. But I don't see any signs that the Fed the Fed is turning this around. So I just wanted to show people that uh, we do do a webinar each Saturday at eight o'clock. And uh, we're going to do – we're doing something different. We're talking about sports, astrology and sports. We're going to do that part two this weekend. And we're talking about certain sports teams and their charts. And so it's kind of a, a fun twist that we're doing this week. So just stop by and check it out, 8 o'clock. Okay. Thanks, my friend. May God bless, folks. We'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless.